Ladies and gentlemen, the first regular snapshot for Minecraft 1.19 The Wild Update is here. This is 22W11A which adds frogs, tadpoles, frog lights, mud, mangrove wood and much, much more. My name is Sliced Lion and I am here as always to take you on a grand tour of all the changes in this snapshot. Let's start with mobs. The frog is a new passive mob that spawns in swamps. They have 10 hit points of health which is 5 hearts. Frogs are amphibious, which means they can both swim in the water and walk on land. They can also jump and like jumping to lily pads and big drip leaves. They can also croak and they like to eat small slime mobs. If you manage to get one into the nether or get a small magma cube to them in the overworld, then they'll eat that instead. It kind of looks like a slime, doesn't it? When a frog eats a slime, a slime ball will drop at its location. When it eats a magma cube, a new block called a frog light will drop instead. There are three variants of frogs and each variant will drop a different type of frog light when it eats a magma cube. If you kill a frog, they drop nothing. You can make nearby frogs follow you by holding a slime ball. If you feed a frog a slime ball, they go into mating mode and once mated, a frog spawn block will be laid on a nearby water block. From this, tadpoles will eventually spawn. The tadpole is another new passive mob with 6 hit points, that is 3 hearts of health. Tadpoles can swim in water but are not amphibious. If they end up on land, they'll flop around like fish do and eventually die. You can pick up a tadpole in a bucket and carry it around. If you kill one, it also drops nothing, just like the frog. After 20 minutes in the world, a tadpole will grow up into a frog. You can also speed this process up by feeding it slime balls, just like you can feed other babies in the game. Which biome the frog grows up in will determine the type of frog. You'll get a green frog in cold biomes, which means snowy plains, ice spikes, all mountain biomes and in the end. You'll get a sandy frog in all warm biomes, that is deserts, all jungle biomes, all savanna biomes, all badlands biomes and in the nether. In all other biomes you'll get an orange frog. Keep an eye on your tadpoles, because axolotls will now also hunt tadpoles. Before we move on to block news, a fix for a hostile mob behavior, Vexus would keep attacking a target even after that target had died. That is fixed in this version. Let's move on to new blocks and items, but stay on the topic of frogs. The frog spawn block gets placed on water when a frog breeds. This block can be broken, but doesn't drop anything. You can only obtain it in creative mode. If you do have these blocks, you can only place them on water. The second new frog related block is the frog lights. There are three versions, verdant from the green one, ochre from the copper one, and pearlescent from the sandy one. They are light sources that emit a light level of 15. Let's move on to a new type of wood. Mangrove wood has been added in this version, but mangrove trees will be added later, so they only exist as blocks at this point. You get all the normal variants that you have of all wood types, including logs, stripped logs, planks, buttons, doors, pressure plates, boats and so on. There are also mangrove root blocks and muddy mangrove root blocks. The roots are a see-through block, just like leaves, but can be waterlogged. Water in mangrove roots currently doesn't spread outwards like with other waterlogged blocks. Mining roots is best done with an axe. If you move a roots block with a piston, it will not break like leaves, but if it is waterlogged, that water will vanish. You can also power them with redstone. The muddy roots are an opaque block and cannot be waterlogged. Mining muddy roots is best done with a shovel. Mangrove leaves have also been added, a new type of leaves which get tinted depending on which biome they are in, just like oak leaves for instance. If you bone meal a mangrove leaf block that has the bottom side exposed, another new block called a propagule will form underneath the leaves. These propagules are like a flower and sapling for the mangrove trees. They grow through four stages which can also be accelerated using bone meal. A fully grown propagule can be broken and planted like a sapling to grow into a tree. Since mangrove trees have not been added yet, for now they will grow into an oak tree instead. You can also plant a propagule into a flower pot. Another new block family is the mud blocks. Mud will eventually generate in mangrove biomes, but for now you can find them in the creative inventory. Or create one by using a water bottle on dirt, coarse dirt or rooted dirt. A process which can also be automated using a dispenser. When you walk on mud you will sink in just like with soul sand, but it doesn't slow you down like soul sand does. You can also craft mud into packed mud by combining it with wheat. 
Packed mud in turn can be crafted 2x2 two two into mud bricks, which is a building material that has stairs, walls and slabs, which you can either craft using your crafting table or cut using a stone cutter. Mud is dug using a shovel, while packed mud and mud bricks are mined using a pickaxe. Another interesting property of mud is that it is a new block that can be picked up and carried by endermen. We have plenty of news to talk about still, but before I get into the final added family of blocks, let me take a moment to ask you to clean some mud off the like button for the video. That helps the YouTube algorithm realize how awesome this video is and that it should be shown to lots of other viewers, so I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Our final new family of added blocks are the Skulk Blocks. In addition to the Skulk Sensor, which is now available from the Creative Inventory, four other Skulk Blocks have been added, which you might recognize if you've previously seen or played the experimental Deep Dark Snapshot. All of these blocks are most efficiently mined with a hoe, and the only way to get the actual block is to use Silk Touch. Mining any Skulk Block without Silk Touch drops experience orbs worth 1 XP per block. The first of the new blocks is simply called a Skulk Block. A special property of Skulk is that even if you place a wool block on top of it, the wool block will not occlude the vibrations. The next new block is a Skulk Vein. They are a thin layer on top of another block, just like Glow Lichen, and can be placed in any orientation. You'll find these on the edges of Skulk Patches, and they can also be waterlogged. Moving on to the Skulk Catalyst Block. This block emits soul particles and has a special interaction with mobs. Any mob that dies on the ground within 8 blocks of a catalyst will not drop any experience, regardless of whether they were killed by a player or not. Instead, a bubbling charge will spawn where the mob died. The strength of this charge will depend on the amount of XP the mob would have dropped if killed by a player. The charge will randomly move from skulk block to skulk block. Multiple charges might end up on the same block, in which case they merge, up to a power of 1000 XP per charge. If a charge encounters a suitable block, it will spread skulk to that block. The suitable blocks are most naturally generating stone, sand, dirt and soil-like blocks from all three dimensions. Every block converted will reduce the charge level by one. The charge also decreases over time, faster the further away from the skulk catalyst it moves. If a charge decays more than four blocks away from the catalyst, it has a chance of using up 10 XP to grow a new skulk sensor. When a charge decays further away than 24 blocks, it will vanish entirely. Finally, we have Skulk Shriekers, which were used to summon the Warden in the experimental Deep Dark Snapshot, but since the Warden is not in the Snapshot yet, it doesn't have its functionality. Let's talk about a few changes for Creative Mode specifically. Like I mentioned before, the Skulk Sensor is now available from the Creative Inventory. There are also new spawn eggs for the frogs and the tadpoles, and one good thing to know is that the frog spawned when using the spawn egg is the same variant as you'd get if a frog grew up from a tadpole in that biome. Let's also talk about world generation. The deep dark biome has been added, but in comparison to the deep dark experimental snapshot, the ancient cities do not yet generate. In the deep dark, you'll find patches of skulk blocks covering the floor and no mobs can spawn here. Let's move on to a few gameplay changes in this version. Scaffolding is now less of an OP fuel for furnaces, burning equally as long as a bamboo does. A fix has been made for an exploit that allowed you to prevent the game from fully executing block updates, sometimes allowing for blocks in invalid states, so-called update suppression, and at other times would crash the game. That no longer works the same way in this update. A few bugs have also been fixed that could cause block desync when crawling or when repeatedly picking up liquids, causing a block to blink in and out of existence or look like it was in a certain place when it really wasn't. A single change to an advancement in this version. The Adventuring Time advancement now requires visiting the Deep Dark. Let's talk about visual changes in this version. The third stage of Cocoa Beans now has the correct pixel size on its side texture. The tops of doors would flip in an unnatural way when they opened in certain directions, that is fixed in this version. The arms of a brewing stand would pop out slightly when it held potions and it didn't connect all the way down to the base, both those problems are fixed in this version. Shields in item forms were offset to one side, so they now properly spin around their own center axis and show up in the right place in item frames and in other places. And a few small fixes to textures. The transition between end stone and the bottom part of the end portal frame texture has been smoothed out. A few pixels that differed between the side texture of mycelium and other dirt blocks have been fixed, and a corner in the bottom texture of the smoker has been turned the right way around. 
let's talk about the user interface changes. The out of memory error screen can now be translated. The Minecraft application icon on Mac OS now shows the Minecraft icon again instead of the Java executable one. You'll now get a short screen showing the message preparing for world creation before the create new world screen shows up. And there are new splash texts in this version. Shriek like a skulk shrieker. Who let the frogs out? Ribbit. Croak team. No! Flower Forest TM Perfume and Hat Fridays. Finally, an accessibility fix. The word recipe was misspelled in the narration line for recipes. It now reads correctly. Crafting. Screen recipe for lime terracotta. Recipe for lime terracotta. Left click to activate. Let's move on to sound news. A new option has been added to the sound option screen controlling 3D directional audio simulation. The options are the classic stereo mode which is the default, that's how Minecraft used to sound. The new alternative is HRTF directional audio, which has an improved model for making it easier to distinguish which direction a sound comes from, including if it's above or below you. This works best when using headphones and can work poorly on some systems, so try it out to see how it works for you. There are also many new sounds in this version. Let's start with block sounds. There are new sounds for breaking and placing frog lights. And for stepping on them. Sounds for breaking and placing frog spawn. For them hatching. And for stepping on them. Although, that is very hard to trigger since you can't walk on water. Mangrove roots have breaking and placing sounds. And sounds for walking on them. Muddy mangrove roots have breaking and placing sounds. And sounds for stepping on them. Sounds for placing and breaking mud. And for walking on it. Placing and breaking packed mud. And walking on it. For placing and breaking mud bricks. And walking on them. There are sounds for skunk blocks. For placing and breaking them. And walking on it. Sounds for skulk catalysts, breaking and placing them, stepping on them, a skulk charge moving, and skulk spreading. There are sounds for placing and breaking shriekers, and for the shriek, although that cannot be triggered in survival at this point. And there are sounds for breaking skulk veins. Frogs also have plenty of new sounds. For eating. A croak sound while idling. Walking sounds. A sound for laying spawn. For jumping. Hurting. And dying. There's also a tongue sound, which is currently not used in the game. Tadpole sounds. They have sounds for hurting and dying. There's also a sound event for emptying a bucket of tadpole, but the sound itself is currently missing. Finally, there are news for stability and performance. A crash has been fixed that would happen if you tried to exit a world while the game profiling was active. And a new field has been added to the F3 menu. If your graphics driver supports GPU timer queries, you will now see the GPU utilization percentage. Before we end, one big known issue in this version. You don't get a dragon to fight when you enter the end. That's it for this snapshot. Thank you so much for staying until the end of the video, I really appreciate it. 
Technical news will follow in a separate video, likely tomorrow, so stay tuned to the channel for that. And if you want to know more about what changed in Minecraft 1.18.2 recently, then check this video out, it has all the details.